Hi Chris, sorry to let you down mate, um, change of plan. I've got to go down south and um, look at a 130 for Kingsman. So I hope you can deal with the boys today and make sure they smash it, make sure they like and subscribe and don't let them take the piss. It all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I'd followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are Maker. So, no Dave this week. Hi, I'm Chris, welcome to the Maker YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please press the subscribe button and remember to turn on the bell for notifications. Like if you haven't already done a like and, uh, and we'd love a comment, it really helps us grow the channel. Um, so yeah, no Dave this week. Uh, best we go and have a look at what the lads are up to. So this is a Defender 110 um, that customers brought into us. Um, it's had a big brake kit from 4x4 fabrication. It's had a new um, cooling pack, which I'll show you in a bit. I'll explain kind of why it needed one, what we've done, what the solution that we've given him. Um, also, it, this is a home build car, so we didn't build this. Um, the guy's put the LS engine in it himself and he's built his own exhaust. It's getting a bit warm, so the cooling pack that was on it probably isn't up to scratch. Um, it's got an integrated oil cooler into the um, radiator itself, so it, it's probably not as reliable as it could be. Um, and obviously with it being a performance car, a performance engine, the guy wants to drive it hard, he's just put big brakes on it. Um, you know, so he wants to drive it fast, but it needs to be reliable. It needs to be a good car that he can say, get in it, rag it a bit, and it still be cool, still be able to do short journeys, long journeys. Between the design of the exhaust and the leaks, it, it, was, it was too loud to drive. It was really uncomfortable. The guy was complaining about the noise. Um, we've sort of designed a solution which is cost effective. You know, it saves space. Before we had a massive box, loads of resonators and stuff coming off the system. That's not good for performance and it's not good for the noise. It was so loud. Um, so we've designed something that's much quieter but also still gives you the rasp, the noise, when he wants to put his foot down, he's got an LS in it. He wants to hear that he's got an LS in it. Um, so we've not taken that away. We've just made it a little bit more tame so he can drive it and be comfortable and enjoy it and have passengers. So if you have a look under here, this is, this is a homemade system with um, a sports cat um, and, and it's obviously made, been, been homemade. It doesn't quite fit and it leaks. This is a system that we've put in so this is a 304 stainless system with a sports cat. Um, we've made it quite tight into the body. You know, it doesn't protrude underneath, so you can still take it off-road. Um, and then if you come back here towards this large back box area, rather than having a cross pipe, which obviously you require on a V8, this has got an internal cross pipe inside the box, and then it wires off into a single three-inch exit. We've got a large area here for the axle to allow the suspension to fully articulate. And then you've got space all around the exhaust for the anti-roll bar to move. Um, and then this is what we wanted out the back, a single three inch rolled tip. And this will sound awesome once it's all done. So what, what's the customer gonna notice in terms, of, in terms of performance? I think the main thing is, you know, it was quite a big system on there anyway. The performance won't be considerably better. Um, but as we said, reliability is really important. And also the fact that now he's not going to have a huge drone when he's driving along you're not going to get that that irritating drone you will just hear the rasp of the v8 and it's essentially it's brought the volume down but kept the sound quality so this is an aluminium fuel tank um, which has been made for project wombat it is a baffled tank, so it has, it's separated into six sections. So we've got basically a wall with very small holes in that stops the fuel um, being thrown around inside the tank, basically, which is bad because you can feel it on the road. More importantly, when you accelerate, all the fuel rushes to the back of the fuel tank. 
And if it's not baffled and you have your pump in the front of the fuel tank, for example, then for that period of time where you have your foot down and all the fuel's at the back, you're running the pump dry, specifically on an engine like this because it's, it's, it's forced induction. It's got a big supercharger on the top, which is forcing air into the engine, which means we can burn more air, we can burn more fuel, so we're getting more performance. So if we were to, for example, run the pump dry, when, he, when he's right up in the RPM, pulling full power, and we run that pump dry for even a second or two, then that engine is, is in its working operation, and then we take the fuel away from it. And as well as the fuel giving us power, it also gives us cooling. And at high RPM and high power, we need a lot of cooling. So we need to be pushing a lot of fuel through it, which is why it's imperative that we make sure it's got all the fuel all the time. So if we were to, if we were to cut this lid off now, you'd see, so you see the, the profile of the tank, it's not quite square. Um, otherwise we'd be sacrificing departure angle at the rear of the vehicle. So departure angle is, or approach angle, is let's say we were gonna go up a very steep bank. And what would happen is as the front starts to climb up the hill, the back gets closer and closer and closer to the ground, which is this bit. So if you keep going and you keep, and it's just steep enough, this is gonna bury into the ground, which they quite commonly do. But if we were to have made that fuel tank absolutely square, like a box, that means that it would sit here like this, which means that if we were in a scenario where the approach and departure angles are central, then we'd be hitting the tank first before we hit the tow bar. And obviously the tow bar is very substantial. It can take a beat in, whereas the fuel tank can't. So that, that one's designed to sit just above the chassis here so that regardless, even if you were to go up a hill with rocks underneath it, the chances of you hitting the tank are much slimmer because it, there's much more in the way that's far more substantial. The chassis, the tow bar, anti-roll bar, axle, you know, anything that's going to hit all of that stuff before it gets anywhere near the tank. And that is why it's that particular shape and not square. So inside here, we've got basically a wall, which is the same shape, but a wall has got very small holes in it. And the hole is bigger on one side than it is on the other, which means it encourages it to flow better in one direction than it does the other. And all directions point towards the pump. So the pump is, is, will not run dry. Not only that, it's, it's, it's surrounded in foam, like a Viton foam, it's fuel safe. Um, so it's all full of foam as well as baffled, which as well as keeping like, the fuel under control of its sloshing, it also uh, mitigates the risk of explosion. So obviously we hope we never need that function, but that, in motorsport that's why it's essential because it mitigates the risk of explosion and it also controls the sloshing of the fuel. All of it's aluminium, every last bit of it's aluminium, all the rubbers, all the seals are all made out of Viton. Um, it's fuel safe, it's ethanol safe. Like, so it's a flexi fuel system, basically. So, you know, you, you could put petrol in this, you could put ethanol in this. You know, it's perfectly safe. It's not going to corrode. It's been cleaned, ultrasonically cleaned inside. So in terms of like performance upgrade, it's not like a bolt on power upgrade, but what it means is, is like this is, this is a core that you build from. Like if you have a fuel system that is above and beyond what your engine needs, then that means that you can get absolute most out of your engine and you're not having to go back and forth between the engine, the fuel system. You know, you know that we've got more than enough fuel to supply that engine. So if he ever says, oh, I want to turn the boost up a bit, or he wants more power, or he wants a different map that requires more fuel, we can get it in without having to take anything apart or change it. It's all just mapping. And we can be confident that we've got the fuel supply there for whatever he needs, really. It's a quick one, Chris. Um, hope the shoot is going well, and I hope the lads are behaving. Um, I can only imagine in this heat, they're going to be a little bit ratty. But anyway, make sure they drop a comment below, make sure they subscribe and push it out nationwide. 
Thanks again. See you soon, mate. Remember in last week's video when Dave talked about the orange G4 Land Rover that needed a load of work so the guy could go on holiday and it needed doing in a week? I can't bring myself to interrupt them. We almost finished the safety cage on this truck for Kingsman. Fitting the lights to Wombat. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week. <laughs>